On this week's episode of What's Up Weekly, we sit down with Royal Encounters, a magical organization on campus bringing some real life royalty to children in hospitals. What's Up Weekly reporter Grace Morocco takes us behind the scenes of Royal Encounters. What's Up Weekly starts now. Hello and welcome to What's Up Weekly. I'm Callie Lichter. And I'm Lucy Kellison. A festival of creativity is coming to IU in honor of the late Molly Parsley, a journalism alumni of IU. IU senior Molly Sawyer is holding the event to remember Molly Parsley's legacy. IU students may submit any creative work. Submitted work will be judged by a panel of students and winners will be announced on November 13th in Franklin Hall. First, second, and third place winners will be awarded a cash prize. Work can be submitted using the QR code on the event posters. For more information, please contact M-O-L-S-A-W-Y at IU.edu. Three Esperanto club members met over a cup of coffee, or should I say cafo, last week. Esperanto is a constructed language that aims to provide the world with a universal language. It's a mix of Polish, Italian, Russian, German, and English. The language was just created, was created just over 100 years ago. Experts guess that only around 100,000 people are active users of the language. The club remembers the club members discussed gardening, music, books, and whatever else came to mind. The group has been meeting every two weeks since the 90s. One of the group members has even represented Esperanto at the United Nations Universal Meetings. When I learned Esperanto in 1989, I never expected that one day I would walk through the doors of the UN to represent the Universal Esperanto Association at meetings there. And yet that's one of the things that has happened. So Esperanto has a tendency to change people's lives in ways they don't expect. The Esperanto group has around six members who meet up regularly. Meet Brody Lassner, a junior at Indiana University has, who has turned his Rubik's Cube hobby into a passionate journey. Brody's love of solving Rubik's Cubes began with a challenge with a friend. From there, it grew into a lifelong passion. Today, he's a competitive solver who balances his pursuit of education with his dedication to the cube. I honestly see myself pursuing sort of like a mentor role in the community when my competing days are over, because this is definitely a community that I want to still be a part of even when I can't be at my peak. Brody's commitment to education takes precedence, but he still finds time to compete in Rubik's Cube competitions. He plans to continue as long as his hands allow with a dream of becoming a mentor to others in the Rubik's Cube community. Brody's journey from friendly rivalry to competitive solving is a testimony to dedication. He, he not only solves cues, but also inspires others to embark on their own puzzle solving journey. Still to come on What's Up Weekly, we get you caught up on this week's trending topics. There was a big name in town. We get you the inside scoop on the star's appearance on Kirkwood and at Kroger. All that and more coming up. Who's your news source? Wednesdays on IUS TV. Welcome back to Trending Topics. Lucy, there is only one person on my mind right now, and that is Kendall Jenner. Yeah, here she is on IU's campus, which nobody even knew about until very, very recently. I know. I was told about this last night, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, this totally can't be true. I don't mm -hmm. believe this. Kendall Jenner would never come to Bloomington. And then this morning, I was sitting there in the IUS TV office. I'm like, oh, my God, is Kendall Jenner coming to Bloomington? Mm -hmm. And I'm getting Snapchats of people seeing her at... Kroger and seeing her on her way to upstairs mm -hmm. pulling up in four black cars to like make sure she's hidden amongst everyone as if she would be hidden in Bloomington. Oh yeah and like let's roll it back for the audience for a second. Mm -hmm. So Kendall Jenner has a tequila brand. It's 818 tequila and so this past weekend she was in Columbus at the Forbes under 30 convention and then she made an appearance at a Columbus bar. And so I think, you know, if she's at Columbus, she's at Bloomington, she's doing a little 818 tequila tour across the nation mm -hmm. at, like, colleges. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to assume there hasn't been anything official. And again, no one officially posted that mm -hmm. Kendall Jenner was coming. You just had to hear it, like, word of mouth. Exactly. But you did the brave thing, and you tried to brave the bar she went to. I did. I went to Upstairs Pub, honestly, one of my favorite bars in Bloomington, but not today. It felt... <laughs> so claustrophobic. There was probably over a hundred people there. I don't even know how it was up to fire code, to be honest. And Kendall came out for, I think, like 10, 15 minutes, served some drinks behind the bar, and then she left again. 
So I could only get a very like, you know, far away glimpse at her, but she was pretty, she was perfect, she was serving tequila. Exactly, and you know what? It was nice of all the men of Bloomington to show up for Kendall to support her business. Oh yeah. It was really kind. I saw a big male representation at the Yeah, bar. yeah, I got pushed off of a chair by, by <laughs> a guy wanting to get closer to Kendall and I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude, it's Kendall Jenner at Upstairs, okay? And she's dating Bad Bunny, so. Yeah, well, Bad Bunny's got a lot of competition with the IU men. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and when we come back, we sit down with Liz Winders of Royal Encounters. And we'll check out what it's like to be a real-life Disney princess. Stay with us. You're watching IU Student Television. We're back now with Liz Winders. Liz, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. So can you explain a little bit about what Royal Encounters is? Yeah, so we are a uh, service-based student organization here on campus uh, with the end goal of brightening sick and underprivileged kids' lives by dressing up as superheroes and princesses. Wow, so when and how did the organization start? Yeah, so we started back in 2017. Um, two sisters, the Sample Sisters, they um, started Royal Encounters uh, with the end goal of brightening kids' lives. So we've been an organization since then and we are really, we're really chugging along right now. So, yeah. <laughs> so how did you get involved with the organization? Yeah, so one of my best friends, Charlotte, actually um, introduced me to Royal Encounters back in my freshman year. Um, she had just gotten a position on the exec board and she was like, Liz, you have to join. And so I, I joined and I've, I've been in it and loved it ever since, so yeah. Wow, so we see this beautiful dress you got going on here. So do you get to pick which characters you dress up as or is there like an audition process? Yeah, so we have um, like an, sort of like an interview process, but it's like an online application process. Um, you can like request certain characters, but we like to base it off of videos and how you describe yourself. That's how we kind of cast. So if you say you're really bubbly and like very fun, you might get Ariel. Or if you say you're kind of dreamy and like <laughs> sweet, you might get like Sleeping Beauty, something like that. So we were talking before the interview that you kind of sourced the clothes. So what's your favorite outfit you've ever found, like your holy grail find? I am in love with the Black Panther costume. Like that is my like baby. I love that <laughs> costume so much. So is there a specific character that's a crowd favorite amongst like the kids? Oh, Anna and Elsa <laughs> are killers. Like everyone loves Anna and Elsa. Like the second we show up to a visit, Elsa is swarmed, and then <laughs> Anna's there too, but like especially Elsa is like swarmed by kids. So that might be like a kid's favorite memory. What's been your favorite memory in your time in Royal Encounters? Yeah, I, my first ever visit with Royal Encounters, I was super nervous, um, and we went and visited an organization called A Kid Again, mm -hmm. and I met this uh, kid, her name was Paisley, she had the, we, the whole time, we just treated her like a princess. We called her Princess Paisley. She had the cutest little um, pink crutches that she was walking around on. She just like really warmed me up to the whole experience and I couldn't have asked for a better first visit. Wow, it sounds amazing. It sounds like you're making a real impact on all these kids. So if somebody wants to hear more about Royal Encounters and maybe even join, where would they find that information? Yeah, you can always follow us on Instagram. Uh, I think the at is Royal Encounters IU or um, at the beginning of every semester, you can apply to join and uh, come to our call out meeting. And yeah, we'd love to meet you guys. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today in studio. And when we come back after the break, What's Up Weekly correspondent Grace Morocco shows us all the behind the scenes magic of Royal Encounters. We'll be right back. The Toss Up, Fridays on IUS TV. Every week, members of Royal Encounters visit hospitalized children. They are just volunteers, but for them, being paid in smiles is more than enough. Seeing their smiles, it's, it's just a fun experience. Like, it's literally worth waking up at 8.30 in the morning to do. And that's exactly what they did. Members woke up at 8.30 in the morning and traveled an hour for their visit. But it's magic moments like these that keep bringing members back. 
such a great organization. All the people in it are great. I've been in Royal Encounters for five semesters. Just like getting to know all the kids and they're just so excited to see you and they really see you as the character as well. It's just so magical to them. What makes it magical for you? Seeing the kids' eyes like light up when they see like their favorite princess or superhero and just knowing that we are making an impact with this club. The event is still going on right behind me and Royal Encounters brought nine princesses today but they have many more characters to their list for their members to dress up as. They have over a hundred members in their club and visit around 15 events like this per semester. I was a little girl, I would visit like Disney World and I remember like dressing up in like Aurora and it was just so magical to me and it's something that I still remember like 15 years later. So being able to do that as part of Royal Encounters is really special to me just because I know I'm giving these kids memories that will last a lifetime. The club has a full semester of visits in front of them, including Peyton Manning's Children's Hospital and other nonprofits. <laughs> this will be the first year since the pandemic that Royal Encounters will be returning to children's hospitals. For more information, you can follow them at Royal Encounters IU on Instagram. And that's what's up this week. Tune in next week for more local and entertainment news. Be sure to follow us on social media. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IUSTV News. And Kendall Jenner, if you are watching, please come on our show. Please follow me as well. For What's Up Weekly, I'm Lucy Kellison. And I'm Callie Lichter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.